Hello and welcome to another Game Guru tutorial and in this one we're going to create a lava pool and we're going to use a brand new shader and we're going to use a new script and I'm going to show you how to put it all together with the new terrain painting system. So this is the end result so bask in its visual glory but now we're going to go back and do it from scratch. So I'm going to delete all the entities and I'm also going to wipe out the terrain for you. So we start completely from scratch. Now you might think I've started again, but actually you can see a little indent. If we zoom down, you see there's a bit of a groove like there. So let's do this right from the beginning. So we flatten out our terrain. Sorry, let's just uh, widen it and not hold down shift. Because if you use the flattening tool but hold down shift, it sort of slightly randomizes it. So if I did into the distance and just hold down shift, you say it randomizes the terrain. But well, we don't really want that because we're starting from scratch. So now I press G, which is a top-down view. We're right back as if we'd started. The only difference is we've got this uh, MERS-1 sandy terrain instead of the normal grass. So we start with a hill terrain formation tool thingy. And we're going to hold down shift and then just click with the left mouse button a little bit. And what that does, it creates a slight indent in the floor, as you can see here. And so the next thing we want to do is sort of paint this crater um, with our terrain painting tools. And I've already prepared, this is the MERS-1 texture plate, but I've actually added a lava texture and a brimstone texture into these slots. And you'll find the reason for that later. But before we paint the terrain, you really want to know exactly where you're going to paint that terrain and for that you need to exactly where the intersection is within this curve. So this is one of the new objects you'll find in the uh, recent update of the sci-fi DLC pack which is called uh, liquid lava. You also have a similar um, what I call a liquid tile in the cartoon category of the core product so you can check it out there if you don't have the sci-fi pack. So if I just move this up a little bit until it just starts to intersect our hill that looks about good and then we're going to switch to the grid mode and then hold down shift so we can do multiple clicks and I'm just going to place down these tiles now instead of being one big tile it's lots of little tiles and the reason for that is each tile will have its own vertex data that's the coordinates of geometry and that's used in order to create that nice rolling ripple effect that you can see so it's important that you've got these sort of sub tiles in order to create this effect so now we've got our pool, the next thing we want to do is to paint an edge. Now if we just left it that like that, it would look a little bit weird. So what we're going to do is select this um, texture, and I'm just going to paint, and this is actually painting the terrain underneath what you see as a disc. Um, but my objective is pretty specific. I want to get the red, which is the lava, if I just paint a little bit of it there, you can see... It's actually love it being painted to the terrain. I kind of want to get to the red, uh, to the outer movement of this, this, this disc that we've got. So as it moves towards the land, I just want to make sure that there's a bit of red wherever it reaches. Almost as if it's heating up the rocks as the lava sort of washes onto the shoreline. So we're just going to go around pretty crudely. You can take as much time as you want doing this. Now you'll notice as I'm doing this, the terrain painting system knows that there's a couple of textures between the lava and the default texture which is sort of this one here and I've chosen the brimstone one because it's a really nice intermediate texture between solid red lava and what might be a sandy or a rocky terrain so that's just a rough idea but it still looks a bit artificial because there's this very clear band around it but that can be solved very simply just by randomizing the next lay it up you know you can eliminate the the banding just by being a little bit random a bit creative with the use of the other textures at your disposal and eventually you get something that eliminates that band and especially when you stood on a shoreline you don't really see the banding at all so now we've got a little lava pool um, and it might interest you to know that this lava when you when the player stands in it it will actually hurt because it's actually got a script associated with it which actually detects the player walking on this and it will give you a bit of a burn. <laughs> so 
you know, you don't want to be walking on lava. Maybe that's an obvious thing to say. So that's fine, good, and well enough. And if you're very good at getting, um, choosing your own liquid texture and choosing your own textures for the terrain, you could probably get these two colours to blend very nicely together. But there's another trick used by a lot of games where they basically hide this artifact. And I'm going to show you how to do that now through these four rocks that I've pre-selected. Again, these rocks are available in the, uh, the Sniper DLC. If we switch off the uh, grid mode, so we're back to normal, I can rotate this rock. I can also use page up and page down too. What you're kind of looking for is to get it sinking into the floor a little bit so you are hiding the intersection points between the lava and the terrain. So we'll just drop one in there, rotate it. So I'm just going to put them in roughly at random. Rotating each time helps because uh, the eye doesn't see them as the same rock if you rotate them. It's a big bruiser, so we'll drop that down a bit. Rotate it some more. Again, don't be too predictable in how you place them down. It's a nice big one, so we'll drop that in some more. Now this is just, I'm doing this roughly because you'll see why in a bit when we go to make and get a little bit more careful. Like so. Now what we can do is use the left right mouse button and we can zoom a little bit closer and just to make sure that your edges are all see this is a good example. You see as it washes back, you get to see a little bit of the ground. Well there's things you can do about that. You can obviously move the rocks, you can move this one a little bit closer here. Just generally to disguise that artifact, hide that one there. And you can keep going and get very, very specific. That's an obvious candidate for uh, bringing in a little bit. And you can always duplicate rocks if you need another one, etc. That's a good candidate. Bring that in. So essentially, a little tweaking. And then eventually, rather than it washing up against the train, it's now washing up against some lovely rocks. And I've saved the best to last because you could say it's one of my most favourite rocks. <laughs> it's this big slab thing. So I'm going to have this slab sort of uh, angled in and I'm going to rotate it down, but it covers that edge like, let's just wrap it around there a little bit, like that, so that's pretty nice. Obviously you can put a little rock in there if you want, but you get the idea, you're basically using the rocks to hide that seam. And uh, we're almost there, we'll just put a little cherry on top, which is the start marker, so you can run up. And this is the next thing I really want to reveal. Actually, this is really winding up that little gap, so I'm going to put a little rock in there as well. And as you know, you can scale in uh, the widget, so we can just bring that down, flatten it a bit, and then we can use that to uh, plug that gap really nicely. And you'll find that's a technique often used in uh, landscaping when you're doing level design, using lots of uh, rocks, but then rotating, scaling, positioning in different ways, and you can get quite a lot of variety out of, as you've seen, four rocks. But the last trick is, you know that, um, say for this particular game, your player's going to come running from this direction, and it's going to get onto the little plateau, maybe they have to shoot something or collect something or what have you, but you know this is your viewing angle. And how do you make it look even better? Well, you create some indirect lighting for these rockies. So what you do, you go to the markers tab, you select a light, which is currently quite high on the uh, set 100 above the, where you'd normally find your entities placed down. And basically what you can do is use the widget, um, which is visible, and just see when it breaks through into a rock. So you know in three dimensions it's sort of nearly off the surface of the lava because it, you can see where it penetrates that rock. So it's going to drop that in, and now we're going to edit it. We're going to change its colour from red, which you might think it's red, but not really. Um, lava emits more of an orange. So that's a better colour for you. And also, if we can extract it again, just reduce the range with the minus sign. Maybe, yeah, that should do. And also it's good to know that, because these are dynamic, if this was, if I bake the scene as a static scene, you could use as many of these static lights as possible with a little red ring. But we're going to use dynamic ones, so we're going to keep them to uh, three or less, because dynamic lights shouldn't be clustered too close together. So I'm going to use a dynamic light for this. So the idea is the lava's got light reflecting onto these rocks. So we want to see that reflection effect. So I'll just pop it about there. I'll hold down shift so I can pop another one, say here, another one, say there. So you can see already, even in the editor preview, that the dynamic lights are being picked up. 
and you're getting sort of light reflecting seemingly from beneath. So with that done, I can jump ahead and do test game. So now we're here in our test game. Obviously, um, no two lava pits will ever be the same. This is another one I've created, uh, the chances of getting exactly the same lava. But that's good really, it means everyone's lava pits will be different if they attempt to follow this tutorial. Uh, there's a couple of other things I'd probably prefer to do. I've noticed that there's this big sharp line in the distance. You can blur that out just by increasing some fog intensity and uh, too much, maybe too much. Another thing you could do, maybe change it to Mars Orange, which lightens that up. I think gold is a higher one. Yeah, it's a little bit nicer. And in fact, as you step back, that fog's looking a bit aggressive now, so we'll just pop that out into the distance a little bit. Yeah, there you go. And also there's other things you can do. I think I might um, knock down the, that a little bit and then maybe increase some contrast to give that sort of stark look. And you see that was really a quick pull together of the uh, lava pit. Obviously you can see it's flowing in a particular direction so you can actually do little rivers of lava and have some fun there. And just to show you that you could actually change its direction if you wanted to. I won't mess about with this because I'd have to start pretty much from scratch. But if I showed you the liquid lava, you can see it's flowing that way. If I just rotate it, it's now flowing that way. Or if you wanted it flowing in that direction, you could do it that way too. So that is a, a nice, easy way to change the direction. But if you feel really ambitious, you can actually go into the shader itself and play around with the UV manipulations, which is based on a time value fed into the shader. But you don't need to worry about any of that. You don't need to mess about with scripting. You don't need to mess about with the shaders. You can just follow this tutorial and you'll have your own rivers and pools and puddles of lava. And as the fun icing on this cake, I'll just prove that I actually will burn myself. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so that's a good safety tip. Don't run through lava. But the cool thing about that script is that if I did decide to put a little rock in the middle, then the player will be able to jump onto that rock, then jump to the other side, and then carry on with the rest of your game level. So this is just a little demonstration on how you can pull together some different elements to create a really nice visual effect and a functional effect for your game level. So until the next tutorial, I hope this was useful and informative, and I'll speak to you next time. Bye!